Hey everyone, Anshita the side. Welcome back to AB Automation Up. From today onwards, I'm going to start with a brand new QA series, which is called Real Time QA Bootcamp. So this series will focus on the real time demos and hands on learning, with the less focus on the slides. So I'll cover everything from basic to advanced level, all within the framework of agile methodology, which will give you a clear picture of what does QA do in any organization. So in this series, we are going to deep dive into several concepts like what is bug life cycle, then what is sprint cycle, what are the different agile ceremonies, then we'll also learn what is API testing, how to do API testing with tools like Postman, then we'll also explore what is shift left testing, different QA strategies, we'll also learn common QA practices which are followed in organizations today, and we'll cover what is the role of QA from the day one starting from the requirement gathering where QA would be involved all the way to receiving a build for testing. We will cover everything. So I'll also write over here, role of QA. So we will see everything in action as we test the real website. So like I mentioned, we'll be testing API testing using Postman. Then we'll also learn how we can automate the flow using the tools like Playwright, Cypress and Selenium. So I will write over here, test automation. We'll also learn how we can perform non-functional testing. So we can use any tool for that, like JMeter or K6. So we will learn how the stories are created in Jira. So we'll also learn about the Jira flow. How does a story move from one status to other status? And what is the role of QA? How much knowledge a QA should have of Jira board? So these are the couple of things which we are going to deep dive. And so it will be whole real-time examples, less of the slides, less of the documentation. We will learn how from the real website, you can perform all these activities and what is the role of QA in any organization. So today I'm going to start with the SDLC, which is Software Development Lifecycle, which is the foundation of any project. So this is a sample image which I have downloaded from Google. So this is the standard software development life cycle where cycles start right from the planning. So in the planning phase, it's generally the BA or the product owner or product manager. So the role varies from organization to organization. So in this phase, what happens? They gather the requirement. They understand who are our customers. The product will be built for mobile or it should be a website and it will be responsive or not, what will be our targeted audience. Next comes the requirement phase. Based on the planning phase, whatever requirements they have received, they present the requirement to the whole team. So this step also have multiple different sub-steps. For example, if you're working in Agile, there is sprint planning, there is sprint grooming. So we will learn that in the upcoming videos. So for now, just understand this is our second phase and this phase also has multiple sub phases and who are the main people involved in this phase so in this phase ba or pm or po present this to the whole team and then there are developers there are designers there are testers all the team is involved in this phase where they understand the requirement what needs to be built and how it needs to be built then we have the design phase in which product designer basically builds the design for a website let's take the example of this open card website for example you have to develop this website so in order to develop this one, we need to have designs first, right? How will your front-end engineer know what to develop here? So for that, we have a team, which is design team, who just focus on creating design. Then is a recording phase in which developers develop the code. Then we have testing phase in which the end-to-end -end testing is done. Then we have deploy phase in which after the testing, the code is deployed to production. And we have maintenance phase in which you monitor the bugs if there's any P0, P1, and you observe the metrics on the production. In upcoming videos, we'll also see the coding also starts after the requirement phase and testing also starts right from here. Fine. This is the standard approach which is followed in most of the organization. But let's say if it is only API testing, then you will not require designs in that case, right? So in that case, the coding phase will start right after the requirement phase. And even the testing phase also will start from the requirement phase. Fine. So this is where our shift left testing will come in. So we will understand what is shift left testing and how we can implement that in any organization. So this is the concept for the SDLC. Now let me quickly give you a brief about any website. For example, the PO comes with a requirement. We have to develop a website. In any organization, it's not just one team will be working on end-to-end -end website. For example, this website has many features. So this is our product listing section in which we have list of products. If I click on this one, it will take us to the product detail page, which also is known as PDP. And if I click on this, it will be added to the cart. And then this part is a separate feature, which is a shopping cart. So in any organization, it's not just one team who will be working on end to end product building. 
there are multiple teams who works for the single website only so there are teams divided for example there is one team who works just on the product detail page there is one team who just works on the payment page there is one team who just works on the product listing page so all these features are divided among different teams and their respective pm or ba or the scrum master they take ownership of the delivery of the product so whenever you see a website just understand it's not like one team will be working on end to end it will be different teams so this is a standard process but yeah there can be case if you have a startup maybe you don't have that much bandwidth maybe there are only 10 people in that startup so there can be exceptional cases in which only the team size is 10 but generally in big organization this is a standard process where there are teams for every feature so this particular video is not only for testers even pms can also refer to this one and can understand how the tech team works in any organization so whether you are a beginner looking to understand the role of qa and how tech works in an organization or if you are an experienced one also and you want to brush up your skills or prepare for an interview i'm sure this series will help you understand and will give you practical insight about the real time project and if you are into documentation i strongly recommend you checking out the official website of cqb syllabus so this is our first video so yeah, if you find this content helpful please like share and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos and thank you for watching